If you are a makeup enthusiast, chances are pretty high that in the last few days, a concerned friend or family member sent you an article about forever chemicals. Let's chat about that today, shall we? Welcome back to the rabbit hole. This is a video that I have to admit to you, I've thought long and hard about whether I want to do this in the first place, but alas, as you may be able to guess, we're doing it today and I'm gonna tell you why. See, I didn't want to do this because, oh goodness, especially if you're in the skincare community, we've had enough bad news lately, have we not? The benzene and the sunscreens, the sunscreens don't have the SPF coverage we thought they do. We've had a lot of bad news, and now there's this. And it's difficult on the surface of this situation to determine whether forever chemicals is something that is truly bad or if this is a repetition of parabens or just general clean clean washing is that a word we're gonna make it one and i think what this situation really boils down to is that we do have another potentially concerning situation i know i hate to open the video with that but we do in actuality we do uh, however as these things often go i also think it's a little bit disproportionately focused at the moment and yet there is an entire conversation to have about uh, brand transparency about safety transparency about us knowing what is in the products that we are applying to our skin. And one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this video is because I noticed that in some of the comment sections around this topic, there was a lot of, uh, you know, anti-makeup type of rhetoric, which I'm pretty used to as someone who makes a lot of skincare videos, but you know, also obviously I wear makeup myself. So, oh, if you think today's video is going to be a video where I say, yeah, you know, ultimately the conclusion is just don't wear makeup, <laughs> One particular comment that really stood out to me was over on SCA. Yes, SCA was discussing this exact topic. Somebody replied, See, this is why I don't wear makeup. I use skincare and only skincare to a point where now I don't even need foundation because my skin just looks like it's wearing foundation. Oh, beauty horseshoe theory. I've heard of that. When actually, let's just go ahead and put this up on the screen right now. Here is a skincare product, a mask that you can go out right now and purchase. And look at how high up in the ingredients list these uh, forever chemicals are. I kind of feel like what's so interesting about this topic today is that this isn't actually anything new. It's in a lot of products, not just skincare nor just makeup products. But uh, yeah, we actually should be talking about this because there are some uh, concerns about safety. And before we get into the video, a quick disclaimer, I am not a toxicologist nor a doctor. I do actually think if you are concerned about this, it's a good idea to go to your doctor so you can discuss whether these people, uh, what are we calling them, forever chemicals, whether these are in your area, whether you are higher risk, that's a good starting point, a much better point than uh, concluding your thoughts on this issue with anybody's internet talking head, you know what I'm saying? And secondly, what we're gonna cover today is the article itself. We're not gonna look at the Guardian, the CNN, all of those articles. We are going to go to the published literature and see what it has to say. We'll talk about what these forever chemicals are, why they aren't always on the label and what's the problem. So the actual published literature is titled Fluorinated Compounds in North American Cosmetics. Indeed, it is not called Forever Chemicals. These are fluorinated compounds we're talking about today. One might get more clicks from news articles, but we always take things more seriously in the primary literature. And just so you know, this is published in the Journal of Environmental Science and Technology Letters. I will have this entire journal article linked in the description box below, along with the supplementary materials, which, by the way, do contain the brands. I know a lot of the news articles are saying that the brands aren't listed. Well, it's that the products aren't listed, but you actually can read the brands if that is something that you are interested in. And for anybody who is upset about about the authors of this study not disclosing the products. I do understand your frustration, but just so you know, I suspect the reason they didn't disclose that is so they don't get hit with some kind of a lawsuit. If you watch John Oliver, a, a good example here of a lawsuit that could hit them would be one of those slap lawsuits. So the study itself is talking about per 
in polyfluoroalkyl substances, also known as PFAS. Again, not necessarily forever chemicals, but here's the catch. It's not really a terrible description. The problem with these PFAS compounds is that we don't actually know when they degrade in your body. So the idea behind calling them forever chemicals is that if you ingest them, they stay with you forever. While that sounds pretty scary, the reason I'm sitting down to do this video is because it kind of potentially is. But take note of what I just said. I just said ingesting. That's where we really do look at the safety data. And this is an article about cosmetics, which I'm pretty sure most people aren't eating their cosmetics. At least if they are, you know they're going to be on that My Strange Addiction show, right? So to give you a rundown of what they did in this study, they analyzed 231 cosmetic products that they purchased in the United States and in Canada, and they found that of the eight categories they tested, long brain foundations, mascaras, and lip products had surprisingly high levels of these fluorinated compounds. They did an even deeper analysis of 29 of those products that did come back with high forever chemical compound concentrations, and they found that of those 29, 28 did not disclose anywhere on the label that there would be these fluorinated compounds present within those cosmetics. So the authors of the study actually do a really good job making it clear why they're concerned about these products that are sitting on the surface of your skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this photo from the article where they show the concerns, the potential for a direct path into the body. So they're showing the direct path through mascara products in the tear duct, a direct path through inhalation, and a direct path through ingestion. And their specific concern there is, well, while you may not be eating your lipstick intentionally, do you end up eating any of it? Do you lick your lips through the day? So you may be consuming small amounts of these forever chemicals. I also really wanna draw your attention to something that somehow is being kind of missed in these conversations. In this illustration, they are sowing an indirect path into the water supply. I think we should be equally focusing on this along with the direct path concerns because this is actually where we talk about PFAS in the sciences. We talk about them appearing in the water levels. I think overall they're trying to indicate that there's a bigger problem here that they want to see addressed. And so I'm just going to read you one more part of this article. So they say the ingredients list of most products tested did not disclose the presence of fluorinated compounds exposing a gap in U.S. and Canadian labeling laws. Given the direct exposure route these cosmetics may present into people, better regulation is needed to limit the widespread use of PFAS in cosmetics. So basically what the authors are concluding in this article is that we need to focus a little more on these compounds so that we can actually assess the safety levels. If these compounds are not appearing in the ingredients list, then it's possible possible that people are using entirely too much of these PFAS and down the road we may see some problems from that. So to really understand what's going on here we have to have a conversation about what the heck are these PFAS anyway. Turns out they're actually kind of interesting. So what these are is a class of compounds that are carbon chains with a fluorine molecule attached to them. This molecular structure makes a very strong molecule. It gives it these properties that are heat resistant, water resistant, oil resistant, stain resistant, which of course means it has a lot of widespread applications. And also because it is so tough, that's kind of why it doesn't really degrade. These actually first appeared in the 1930s in a military environment. They were being used on armored tanks. And then of course they made their way to consumers via Teflon. So you see what's going on here. Heat resistant, water resistant, oil resistant, Teflon pans. Everybody loves a Teflon pan. Incredibly easy to clean and cook with, right? And because of these very tough properties, we started using them in a lot of different applications. You probably have them on your seats in your car right now. If you own any kind of weatherproof clothing, it's probably on those. Have some rain boots? They're probably made with forever chemicals. They're used in carpets. They're used in cleaning products. They're used in firefighting foam. In fact, there actually was a recent study that found firefighters have exceptionally high levels of these PFAS in their bodies. And also, they're in food 
wrappers. Let me not get too ahead of myself, but that is a pretty important one to take note of right now. And they've been in makeup for a while again. Why? Well, you follow me here. You understand that these are tough ingredients, so they often appear in long wearing makeup products. And to give you some backstory on why this is exceptionally tricky of a conversation, these have been around for a long time. We have done safety studies with them, but the thing is, the safety studies haven't always been a great story. And because this is actually a class of compounds and not just one singular compound, we actually, to do this correctly, need to analyze long-term studies of safety of every single last one of these compounds. And the problem is we kind of haven't done that because it's kind of difficult to do. How do you know that a relatively new chemical is going to be safe over the course of somebody's 80 year lifespan when that initial compound hits the market? You kind of don't. What I'm trying to say in this entire conversation here is that these compounds are kind of everywhere and they're everywhere because people actually like what they do. People desire to have easier cleaning products. People desire to hold their food and not get their the oily substances from the food all over their clothing. But the problem that the authors have and also a very fair question is, but how safe are these ingredients? It's great that people like them, but do people even know whether the are safe or not. So what is going on with these compounds not appearing on the label? That's a big problem that the authors have and I think it's a big problem as well. There are kind of two possibilities going on here. One is that this is similar to the situation with the benzene in sunscreens where there could potentially be some kind of contamination. But ultimately, it seems the authors and I are kind of thinking similarly in terms of what might be going on here, and it might have to do with something called trade secrets. I have yet another link for you in the description box below to the FDA where you can read about the cosmetics labeling guide. Let's focus in on trade secrets. Basically what it says in here is that nothing shall be deemed to require that any trade secret be divulged. And this actually does mean that if these PFAS, Forever Chemicals ingredients, are giving a product some kind of an advantage, which we already talked about because they are long wearing ingredients, right? If it's giving it an advantage, it is possible for companies to apply for a trade secret exemption. And that's where the authors and I both share this problem. This means that if you are somebody who has decided, hey, you know what, I do have concerns about these ingredients being in my products, I'm going to avoid them. Well, because of trade secrets, Reading labels may not get you anywhere at all. So what's the problem here? Well, I truly believe that people should have the right to avoid any ingredients that they're concerned about. And what this study exposes is that that's all good in theory, but if the ingredients aren't actually disclosed to the customer, then we are kind of pretty powerless in avoiding these. So this really does bring to light the need for more regulation and also more safety data in terms of cosmetics. But ultimately, the reason I'm sitting down to make this video is because I see a lot of people getting really, really concerned about their makeup products. Like I always say, I respect everyone's decisions and choices, and if you want to avoid these, it's a smart idea to avoid any ingredients that say FLOR, F-L-U-O-R, and also to avoid long wearing products, as that's where we're seeing the problem, and you understand why, because you know what PFAS are now. But my ultimate conclusion is oddly enough so similar to another discussion we had on this channel not long ago. Bear with me, we're gonna come back to the topic, bear with me. So a couple of weeks ago we talked about low and zero waste beauty products, right? We talked about how it's a good idea to buy those if you want to reduce your environmental impact it's a better idea to buy less products. And it's ultimately a very, very good idea to recognize that ultimately our cosmetics products are still a small part of the problem. A much bigger problem is our food waste. If you're somebody who's gotten pretty good at talking yourself out of a lipstick that you would keep around for two years, hey, that's great. But did you eat takeout twice in that day? Because that's a lot more plastic contribution to our waste supply, right? And that's the funny thing about this situation. I'm amazed at how many people are talking about this and how it's a problem in our makeup, but like we said earlier in this video, it's a problem in our food wrappers as well. And like we talked about with direct paths, 
Do you eat the food on your wrappers? I wouldn't say to throw away all of your makeup, never wear makeup again, and yet to neglect this issue that is going on in our food wrappers and in our water supply. I think that it's in some ways good that this issue is brought to light within the beauty community. I guess what I'm saying is I've noticed how often this conversation happens and seems directed at people who wear makeup, when in reality, this is a problem, but it's a problem that we need to take a big step back from and say, okay, where is the real source of this issue? What is actually going on? Where do we need to be the most concerned? And ultimately, it is in regulation of these cosmetics, but it's also in these ingredients themselves. Are they safe? We need more safety testing on that, and we also need to recognize that the biggest concern is ingestion. It is a problem more so based on your location, your water supply, but it is a problem. And again, you know, this forever chemicals terminology is not necessarily wrong. And therein lies the problem. The problem at its core is that we're talking about these chemicals that people like the mechanisms of, but we don't truly know the long-term safety of. So that's what I have to share with you today. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I truly hope, I truly hope, this is actually my second time filming this, by the way. I hope that I'm not leaving you concerned, but I hope I am leaving you motivated to wanna push for these legislation changes. Again, there's no reason for this trade secret loophole on the labels. We should know what it is that's in the products that we apply to our skin. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did find today's video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.